In his book Astronomy and Nova, German astronomer Johannes Kepler presented the findings of his 10-year research of the motion of the planet Mars. After years of analyzing data collected by his supervisor Tycho Brahe, Kepler came up with three laws of planetary motion that challenged astronomers' previous beliefs about the motion of planets in our solar system. This video presents Kepler's three laws of planetary motion. For centuries, astronomers believed in the geocentric model, in which the Earth is the center of the universe while the Sun orbits around it following a circular trajectory. Then came Copernicus, whose heliocentric model placed the Sun as the center of the universe and other planets, including Earth, orbiting around it in perfect circular orbits. Still, none of these models match the collected data of the motion of the planets of our solar system. This is where Kepler's first law, the law of orbits or law of ellipses, comes into play. By studying the motion of the planet Mars, Kepler came to a revolutionary conclusion, contradicting the previously held notion that planets had circular orbits. Instead, Kepler affirmed that all planets have an elliptical orbit, with the Sun at one of its two foci. And that is Kepler's first law. But what is an ellipse in the first place? Well, an ellipse is a geometric shape, a somewhat flattened circle characterized by two points, each called focus and both referred to as foci. When these two points merge, we get a circle with one center. Also, from any given point of the ellipse's circumference, the sum of the distances from the point in question to both foci is constant. Unlike a circle which has a constant radius, an ellipse has two axes, the longest axis called major axis and the shortest axis called minor axis. Also, half of the semi-major axis is referred to as the semi-major axis. Now, let's move on to Kepler's second law. Known as the law of areas, this law states that the imaginary line connecting a planet to the sun sweeps equal areas during equal periods of time. This law implies that a planet moves faster when it's closer to the sun and slower when it's farther away. Thus, when the planet is at its perihelion, the point where the planet is the nearest to the sun, then that planet is moving at its maximum speed. However, when the planet is at its aphelion, the point where the planet is the farthest away from the sun, the planet is moving at its minimum speed. Then comes Kepler's third law, or law of periods. According to this law, the square of the period is directly proportional to the cube of the semi-major axis of a planet's elliptical orbit. In other words, the square of the period over the cube of the semi-major axis is equal to a constant. Kepler's three laws of planetary motion took us a step further towards understanding the complex dynamics of our solar system and beyond. His fundamental laws were the starting points from which Sir Isaac Newton deduced his famous formula of universal gravitation and expanded our understanding of our universe and our place in it forever. <laughs>